Jesse so that they understood their roots. So my father left China to seek a better life in Penang, made enough money to bring three kids up, and then grew to love his home. Love and money, as Philip said, it's not love of money, it's love and money. Both are intertwined or should be. Because if you do what you love, and you love what you do, money should follow. Love shouldn't impoverish you. But as Philip said, you know, sometimes passion doesn't pay the bills, right? I have a singer friend who once said to me, you know, you have to be very careful. Passion can make you very poor. Because if you love what you do, you tend to want to do it for free, right? How many of you do things for free because you love to do it? <laughs> right, you do. Because you just, you just want the chance to do it. And sometimes you love it so much that you would actually pay to do it. How many of us do that? How many of us actually pay to do what we love? See, I see a few hands up here. But in the world of hard knocks and reality, and it is a tough world out there, money has to come into it. And if you value what you do, and people should value what you do, people should pay you for it. For me, making money out of what, doing what you love is very satisfying because it means there is value in what you're creating, and people are actually prepared to pay for it. And with all the craziness that's happening in the world, travel is what brings us together. Last year, it recorded 1.6 trillion worth of industry. What does this mean? It means about hotel booking, it can mean about flight, activities, tours, anything under the sun. That's how big it is. And with this, 44% of the entire transaction has, are actually done online. Do you know how many zeros are there in the trillion? No, I don't know. <laughs> no idea. Yeah? Yeah. Me neither, it's too much. <laughs> What's driving this? Yes, it's growing about 6% year over year, and then we ask ourselves, what is driving this? Technology. Technology adoption is driving travel. You run so what is small businesses? make up the third largest part of the, tour next, of the uh, travel space. So tours and activities makes up 10%. So it's the third largest after airlines and hotels. It's all of you. It's the small business. So it's not, if you're combined, you are larger than rail, you are larger than cruise, you are larger than car rental. It's amazing. So just remember that. You are part of something very big. Um, the total tourism activities market is valued uh, currently, so 2019, at 171 billion US dollars, which is about 700 billion ringgit. That's, again, a huge number, right? Probably too big. Here's another one. So that's, you know, that's too big for me. That's a lot of zeros. Not as many zeros as a trillion, but still a lot of zeros. Um, and Asia Pacific, this is the part I really like. Asia Pacific is the largest regional segment. So it's larger than Europe, it's larger than US, um, and it's certainly larger than all the other markets combined. So 33% of the, of the tourism activities market is right here in Asia, which is huge. And 80% of, uh, of the bookings that are done are offline bookings. So when we look at, at Wayne's slides about online penetration and it's, and it's gonna be up there at, a, at you know, 50% in the next couple of years, that's true for the other segments, but for tours and activities, it's still very much offline. It's still very much an offline business. Uh, and use some digital marketing. And this was uh, one of the orangutans we saw yesterday. It was so much fun. She was fantastic. Um, thank you, and please feel free to connect with me. I'm here all day. I want to get across to some of the points that Stephen touched on. You love what you do, hopefully, and I want you guys to make sure that by using effective payment tools, you can increase your markets, you can make sure you earn the money that your business deserves to pay your staff, to give you the life that you want, and you can continue to, do, to love what you do and continue to do it. So where to start? There are lots and lots of, of payment companies, and, and this is a slide I put up in Penang. But Penang was good, I love the food, absolutely love the food, but I am gonna talk about love, okay? And you're gonna have to do a bit of work here, okay? So don't be shy, 
You don't have to shout out or answer, but you do have to prove that you're awake. So can you put your hands up if you're awake? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody not got their hand up? Just give them a nudge if they have. Okay, good. So first, hands up if you love ka -ching. This is my first time, and I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we've had an absolutely fantastic time uh, exploring some places. Sadly, I leave tonight, but this is a great place. As an international tourist, I want to come back. I want to bring my, to uh, want to bring my family back. And hopefully, you want to show off what you do and show off your great city. Who loves ice cream? <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the photo in the middle isn't Instagrammable. That's the one I destroyed earlier in the week. But uh, I love ice cream. But with nuts, it's just wrong. <laughs> That's a private joke. Who loves tourism? Hopefully you all love tourism because you're here. And tourism for me is about showing off what you've got, showing off uh, you know, your wonderful activities, your wonderful tours, your wonderful hotels, to as many people as you can without it becoming sort of mass tourism. You know, you want the right people, but you want to get outside the, the people that always come. And for me, that comes down to money and that comes down to payments. Our, our trips are all water-based, right? kayaking, bamboo rafting, and we did a bit of uh, caving in our area in Semadam. It's a you know, Pawut Padawan area, very nice area with beautiful mountains. Okay. How long have you been doing this for? We started in 2011, and now it's already like eight years. Okay, so you're offering uh, kayaking trips, village trips, things like that. Okay, so you're and you're based from Samadan, from the village. Yes, I'm based in Samadan. Okay, so this is a real sort of genuine local homegrown yeah. adventure trip. Yes. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chuan, what is it that you do? Hi, I'm Chuan. I'm uh, my company is called Paradesa Borneo. Uh, it's a sighting tour company uh, that I started. Um, uh, we started with a uh, one-day tour, and uh, now we have uh, more than uh, 15 day tours, cycling tours, and we also uh, have uh, uh, a lot of these uh, cycling holiday packages. That means uh, we take tourists uh, for uh, up to two weeks, every day cycling from one place to another. So basically, it's, uh, and we also mix in multiple sports, uh, activities such as hiking, uh, kayaking, uh, into our tours. Okay, that's excellent. I mean, so the kind of clients that, that come to your um, attraction, what what do you think that they're looking for? What do you, the feedback is that you get from them? We've been very fortunate that, like, you know, a, a lot of people felt their visits to the museums would actually be very, very enriching. So most of the comments that we got would be like, um, well preserved, well curated, uh, you know, um, and um, our museums are not that big. Like you know, it's just small, but it's uh, you know it's very enriching, all right. And uh, what the only thing would be like, for instance, uh, the power of um, uh, Google search, for example. Be what I should be looking less congested areas that I've been in. My wife is Malaysian, so before I start, I'm just gonna quickly check through the audience. Okay, so I have no family members here, which is great. Because um, two of the big things you'll take away from this little section over here would be, well, I'll be talking a lot about my mother-in-law and my wife, and you'll start to understand why a little bit later. So they're Malaysian. Um, we want to talk a little bit about what the traveler's actually doing, but let me put it in a bit of context, right? So um, a lot of what I do deals with hotels. Um, and if you ask hotel, what their booking lead time is, and, you know, they might tell you a couple of weeks. But what we very seldom see is what has happened before that booking transaction was made. That was it. And you come to KK, to Kuching, you just go to the Holiday Inn, which is today the Grand Margarita. And then, of course, <laughs> and to market your hotels, and the hotels will spend thousands and thousands of dollars to print brochures. Remember, we love to collect brochures. We go to tour agencies, we collect those brochures. And then we study them, look at them, comparing them. But now no longer the case. All the information you needed in the older days were on brochures. Mm. Then came the internet. Mm. Yes, too fast. 
<laughs> so the internet came along, and what happens? Everybody have to have a website. Those of you who, do, who does not have a website today, you need to think about it. You are going to be left behind. Or just walking into your hotel or your service. It's obviously the best, then you pay no third party commissions to everyone. So we would love that to happen all the time. We would love everyone to come directly to us. We would love to have the end to end ownership of the customer relationship. Um, however, it doesn't happen. Um, you know, we know that the more the internet grows, the more the um, uh, big hotel companies in particular try to push direct, 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 the actual direct share remains relatively flat. Um, an awful lot of people still use third-party services to find your products. So you've got to be sensible about using those third-party track food and you'll end up spending 15, 20% as a commission. Um, you know, it's one to nine ringgit typically for a property name keyword for the property owner. As a property owner or as the activity owner, your website is the most relevant website for that term. Google will, will reward you for that with a higher quality score which means what you will have to pay for that web, for that keyword is a lot less than what Booking or Expedia would have to pay for that keyword. So you should be bidding that. And yes, those big sites will also bid on it and they will get some of the traffic, but you should absolutely be bidding on your own property name or your own activity name. Um, and I would recommend you should be bidding out on a global basis, assuming your website is translated into all languages and can accept currencies in all, you know, all currencies. Um, so brand keyword bidding is a must. The second thing um, I, I recommend you look at is brand assurance okay. rates. Okay. Um, the then I think we can throw ideas around that. I think as a whole, let's use tourism as a product. Yeah, a homestay. Okay, homestay, okay, great. It's okay. okay. Uh, basically, all these businesses, they need a platform to market the product and websites.
So if you can find a partner that can give you this um, data back to <laughs> back to what I Expedia mentioned before, data for the marketing. So um, if you can find this data that can tell you uh, the audience. He's a former investment banker who gave it up for vegetables. So basically, he gave up yeah. money for vegetables. <laughs> Tell us uh, how you how you started Pure Farms. <coughs> <laughs> actually, actually, it wasn't uh, it wasn't planting and all that. And uh, I happened to raise some money for all these um, commercial um, conglomerate that are involved in farming. So then. The opportunity just arrived, arose that, you know, at that time, the Asian, I mean, there was a crisis, financial crisis. Then I looked, uh, I basically spoke with my colleague, you know, said, let's do something else, you know, the industry is quiet now. So then we thought, why not we just do some planting, you know? Was this 2009 or rather you can't have your prices? It's it? about year 2000. Year 2000, okay. All right, year yeah. 2000. So we, we thought that it was quite easy. We calculated if we can plant our own beef. Actually, I started off doing chicken, not, not vegetable. Mm -hmm. And we thought that if we can plant our own feed, it would be zero cost, to, almost zero cost to us. Then we can feed our chicken. So we make a lot of money that way. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, it's actually more a bit beyond gray apes now. So it's okay. actually all, all endangered uh, uh, animals on the island. All right. So, so now you know. So now we've we've learned about your love. So you know, this is love for your hometown, Sydney Awan. Love for farming <laughs> and Sydney Awan as well. You know, and, and love for love for the green apes. So now let's talk about money, right? And um, let's talk about initial stage. You said that you know the villagers were not stage. Just careful now. Okay. So basically. Basically, uh, then after that, we realized, okay, we, we don't really have enough to, because, you know, in any business that you want to make money, it's not just about production, you know, it's about marketing, distribution. Exactly, that's what we've been talking yeah. about this morning, right? It's, it's, it's more than that. So a lot of people only, only think, you know, I have, I have uh, a lot of friends that, you know, like Musang King now is like 50 ringgit of fruit. They will just come, one, one tree can bear 100 fruit. Ten years time, so they just calculate very simply. But actually, it's not everything. Any business you do, production is maybe about thirty percent of the cost. Then marketing and distribution is another seventy percent. So then we realized at that time we have a product, but we don't have the ability to, to market. So we went to the bank for loan. All the banks rejected us except uh, Maybank. You know, they are the first one who gave us about about hundred and. 60,000. Okay. <laughs> then Sesco took about 60,000 to connect electricity. <laughs> <laughs> so now you're profitable. So now you're profitable. Yeah, we are profitable. Okay, and so what do you produce in your farm now? We produce, uh, actually, it took us many years to realize that we cannot be uh, producing one product. Like, uh, we, we start off with chicken, mm -hmm. but then uh, our chicken now is, is free range. So after <coughs> we, we let that out in the uh, the waste product that's out in the field, we, we actually plant corn there. So from the corn itself, uh, the whatever the the, the, the <coughs> that leaves, uh, uh, I mean drops on the ground, we let our pigs go and uh, forage okay. as well. You know, then on uh, after we process the chicken, the intestine goes to the fish. Mm -hmm. and then we have fish to sell as well. And then now we are implementing a new one where we're using the water from the fish pond to grow vegetables, you know? Right, so, so it's, it's everything it's, is like a cycle. Always, yeah. You never yeah. thought you'd come here to learn about farming, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, fascinating.
interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so it does takes a lot of uh, different kind of uh, uh, knowledge. It's not yeah. a, a, a simple one product kind of. Uh, it sounds like a travel company too. The position for yeah. the two guys in that I arrived and I had no startup capital. I just had a huge amount of debt, uh, like a huge chronic amount. Yeah, the, looking after an orangutan, for example, even just the cost of trying to rehabilitate it, you know, for, for one orangutan might be fifty thousand USD. So I came into an environment where I had about maybe three hundred animals, and there was no fun, zero funding available for them. Um, so I started from day one with okay, I had no money whatsoever, and by the end of this day, I need maybe five thousand ringgits worth of food to give to these animals. So I've been constantly playing catch up on on the cost of the conservation work that we do. And as we've been a bit more successful, we've, we've opened up these non-profit businesses that the charity owns, so it then enables us to do our conservation work. Uh, but as we've become more successful at fundraising, I've be become better at fundraising, I can't help but look at other charities that are struggling massively uh, in the same position I was. So mm -hmm. then we end up saying, okay, well, we're a bit bigger than you, so, so we'll, we'll pay to your costs as well. How long do they see? How long do they see? Yeah, we're yeah, talking yeah. about this. Because, um, they, you know, they, they tend to rest throughout the night. So uh, like us, we're, we're a grade A. Maybe that's one thing that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, a number of people that I speak to don't realize that we're also a grade A. Yeah. And that genetically, we're, we're essentially chimpanzees. The, 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 the chimpanzees, bonobos, and humans are, are really uh, very, very remarkably close to one another. Oh, and actually chimpanzees and bonobos, we can do blood transfers with them. As long as you match the blood proteins, uh, uh, AB positive, negative, things like that, we have the same blood flow. Okay, so I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Alright, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know about the smart, unique, different digital. Get mobile. 82% of us will be on it sooner rather than later. Create great experiences, be it kayaking, cycling, or history. Get your experience discovered through direct search content. Get your product distributed. Direct or indirect, mind the rate parity. Get more travelers at the right point of their path to purchase. Inspire them with cool campaigns. Influence them with influencers, nano or micro or AI. Engage them, build communities. Finally, guys, get paid. Make it easy for your customers. Ever send? Thank you so much for attending.